Hello, my friends. Joe Wolverton, teacher of Liberty, here to talk to you today. First of all, are you keeping up with your commonplace books? Guys, it's the easiest, surest way to separate the men from the boys. And you know what I mean, the women from the girls, whatever. It's the easiest way to separate those who are taking stuff seriously and those who are just passing time. Because every man that is called a founding father, all of them had this. Go and read. They all had a commonplace book. I put those quotations at the beginning of the, of the video of every podcast episode. I put the quotation at the beginning so that y'all can do that. You just pause. I don't leave it up there long because I don't want you know that much just time going by when you could pause it, write it down. But remember, it's not the writing down of the quotation. I would say that's 10%. The 90% is rolling it round in the old noodle. Ponder. Remember, pound, ponder, to weigh, to consider. What does this mean? Why? What did the founding fathers learn from this? What can I learn from this? How do we know they learned from this? What could I apply from this to my own time? How could I qualify myself to be a leader by walking in the footsteps of the leaders who came before me. Well, one of those great ways is to keep a commonplace book, to read the things they read, and to hang out with Joey a couple of hours a week. Yeah? All right. Today, I am going to... You're going to learn more about what's really happening behind the scenes in this country than you could ever learn from watching any of the pundits any of the political harpies on YouTube, any newspaper, and certainly any textbook. And I want to remind you before we start, I, and I promise you that, it's not even, because I'm not, I'm not going to reveal secrets. They're not really secrets. They're just secrets because they're being kept from you. But I can tell you where to find it, and I'm going to share it with you today. And it won't be secret anymore, but the, I, but the question will remain. Now that it's been uncovered, will we do anything with that new weapon or will we just leave it lying there, right? It's like, uh, who said that? Marcus Aurelius. You can fight like a gladiator who uses a sword and occasionally puts it down and picks it up. Or you could fight like a boxer and just use your fists and always be ready to go. All right. Be like the Germans, like that tribe of Germans that Tassa says they... They slept on their swords. They were always ready to go, right? Um, a uh, uh, Chaucian, the Chaucians. Be a Chaucian, remember? All right. I don't know if I've talked about that yet, but be a Chaucian. Look it up. Uh, Tacitus is Germania. Uh, let's see, what was I going to tell you? So, you're going to learn more about this. It's not secret. You're going to learn. But remember what Polybius, the great ancient historian Polybius, remember what he said at, in his book, Histories. He said, if you can understand the concepts of cause and effect, and you can read history, then you can predict the future of any country. So what I'm going to tell you today, we're going to look back 2,600 years ago, and you're going to see that nothing has changed. Now, that's not to say history repeats itself, because history is inert. History is words written in a book. History doesn't repeat itself. History is simply a record of how human beings continue to make the same stupid mistakes and not learning. Right? All right. So keep that in mind. Cause and effect. You can read history. Predict the future. What I'm going to tell you, the stories I'm going to tell you today, happened 2,600 years ago, but still happening. And we can do something about that because knowledge will forever govern ignorance, right? So once you know, you can start teaching other people. And pretty soon, all these hid and unregarded kids, they get old enough to do something about this stuff, and they do. All right, the ancient sources I will be using today. Aristotle's Constitution of Athens. Plutarch's Life of Solon from his Parallel Lives and Herodotus Histories, right? This is the translation by Tom Holland, a personal friend and awesome guy. 
Uh, yeah, some of you who are my students may remember we had a uh, Zoom lesson, or not Zoom, back then it was Skype, with Tom Holland a couple of years, you remember? You guys were fascinated because he's British and had a cool accent. So, Herodotus, the Histories, Plutarch's Life of Solon, and Aristotle's The Constitution of Athens. All right, let's get it, let's go. So, Solon is the lawgiver of Athens. Remember Lycurgus, the lawgiver of Sparta? This is Solon, the lawgiver of Athens. So, he is also one of the seven sages or seven wise men of the ancient world. I'm going to do another episode later on about that because you won't believe how they got that name to create. Don't look it up. Don't spoil it. Just wait for me to do an episode on the seven wise men of the ancient world. It'll blow your mind. All right. What? Solon. He's asked to write a constitution for Athens. And the people were so happy. And he tells them, all right, I get that you like the constitution. Appreciate you. But this is what we're going to do. I'm going to go away for 10 years. When I come back, if y'all are still living according to the constitution that I gave you, then we'll know it's a good constitution and we'll just keep on keeping on. If I get back and you have abandoned the constitution, then we'll know that it wasn't the right constitution for you and we'll just do whatever. All right, so he goes away. It gets on the minnow. It was supposed to be a three-hour tour. But the weather started getting rough and his tiny ship was tossed. And if not for the care, for the courage of the fearless crew, his little boat would have been lost. But the, the mate was a mighty sailing man. And the skipper, he was brave and true. And they ended up stranded on some tropic isle. But anywho... Solon's gone for 10 years. He comes back. No sooner had he gone. Right? He, didn't, he doesn't know. He's traveling around doing his thing. Took like a Royal Caribbean cruise. He took like a Viking cruise. He went RVing. He did the thing for 10 years. No sooner had he left though. Than Athens. Yep, forget that constitution. No, sir. They divided themselves up into political parties. Now, they divided themselves up in this. They were quarreling. It's your fault. No, it's your fault. No, it's their fault. It's their fault. I mean, come on. They divided themselves up into three parties. Now, you've never heard of this, but the, oh my goodness. And there's a reason, but we'll get to it. They divided themselves up in Athens into three parties. Men of the hills. Okay, men of the hills, these were your poor class, uh, working class. They didn't own property, no political say whatsoever. Completely voiceless, disenfranchised, men of the hills. The poor class, working class, yeah, no power. Men of the coast. These are people who used to have no power, but they are merchants. They're the middle class, and they have just recently acquired political power because of their increasing wealth. And they live on the coast, hence the name Men of the Coast. They live there because that's easier to, you know, to get uh, trade, right, on the water. So they live on the coast, kind of like how people now, you know, live near the interstate so they can get to work, right? Same kind of thing. We'd be called the men of the interstate. Anywho, men of the hills, men of the coast, and then you had your generational wealth, men of the plains, the plains, men of the plains, not plains, but plains. Men of the plains, these are guys uber wealthy, if not generational wealth, so much acquired, newly acquired wealth that they were given a lot of political power, right? These are the guys that never had to worry about whether they were going to have political influence or not. They always did. So it caused contention, the parties, the, they, they, the people would say, oh, we love the constitution of Solon, but the problem is, this party keeps violating it. And that party would say, no, that party keeps doing it. 
you're making trouble, you don't obey the law, you obey the law, but don't expect, you expect us to obey the law, but not you, blah, 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 yeah, yeah. same old thing, these three parties, going, well, mainly two parties, because guess what, men of the hills, I mean, men of the uh, plains, just let them fight, men of the plains, yeah, they're fine, men of the hills, men of the coast, always fight, it's your fault, no, it's your fault, yeah, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then they thought, oh, this is so good. You know, he says, um, who is it? Herodotus. He's like, everyone looked for and desired a change of government, hoping that the change of parties would make things better for them. If only we could have that guy in office, we'd get the Constitution back. No, he's the worst. We need our guy, and he'll get the Constitution back. <sighs> All right. A law, okay. I'm about to mention a name, guys, that this is a guy that the Founding Fathers talked about so much, and you have never heard of him unless you've taken my class. His name is Pisistratus. Pisistratus is known as the tyrant of Athens. Look, if you're ever known as the tyrant of anything, you've done, you know, capital T, the tyrant, you're doing pretty well. I mean, you're doing horribly evil, but I mean, you know, you're going to be known. Now, Pisistratus rides into town. He is, by birth, a man of the plains. What does that mean? Right? Dinero. He's, by birth, a man of the, man of the plains, right? However, let me read to you from some of the three sources that I mentioned how he is described. An extreme Democrat. Now, that not a capital D Democrat, not like Joe Biden, but Democrat meaning man of the people. Smooth and engaging in his way of speaking. Had a skill to imitate feelings he didn't actually possess. Able to portray himself as a friend of the poor. Pretended to be a friend of the Constitution and its protection. He was able to deceive the majority of the people. He had a passion for preeminence. An ambition for absolute power tyrannical aspirations, very cunning, made himself appear to be an advocate of the poor, secured the support, subtled, subtly secured the support of the poor and the workers. You never, yeah, gosh, you never hear politicians nowadays doing anything. That's weird. How, what, how crazy 2,600 years ago. Wow, they were so weird that someone like that got himself elected by the men of the hills. Yeah, the men of the hills, the working class, they, they, you know, they didn't vote for him because there was no voting, but he was the guy that they relied on to get them some political power. Cause they're, but why is that? Why are the, the voiceless, the disenfranchised, those who feel historically oppressed, why out in front of those marches do you always see somebody who's wealthy? You always see some wealthy guy somehow getting wealthier off his advocacy of the poor. You always see the guys lead, you know, encouraging and writing the checks for the riots whose property is never in danger from any of the riots and the protests and the destruction of property that goes with those things. You never, right? I mean, look what our founding fathers did. They were angry at the royal governor, so they tore down the royal governor's house. We get angry at the politicians and we go to the Capitol building. We get angry at politics and oppression and we loot Target. Why, why not, you know, why not the people doing it? You ever notice that? Men of the hills, I mean, men of the plains always safe, but always somehow, just like Pisistratus, the men of the plains always in charge of 
the men of the hills and all the protests and all of the everything somehow they're always out there leading it and writing the checks hmm. so Pisistratus plays both ends against the middle now I want you to remember a man of the plains but leading advocating supposedly for the men of the hills the poor the working class who don't own property who can't vote and remember extreme democrats smooth and he oh he was a veteran too a smooth talking veteran everybody loves a smooth talking veteran am i right well i served this country did you great so who cares you know what i mean it's like why does that make why does that make you suddenly you know more qualified than someone else but we fall for it same with him smooth talking veteran able to portray himself as a friend of the poor pretended to be in favor of the protection of the constitution uh able to deceive the majority of the people uh very cunning S secures the support of the poor and the anyway same thing this is Pisistratus. so he decides even though he's a man of the plains the men of the hills get him to be their guy and he does he's amazing i'm gonna give him his credit he's amazing pisistratus plays both ends against the middle he tells the men of the hills look i'm gonna tell you all the truth no one else, everybody else lies to you look right you know that you know politicians how do you know they're lying their mouth's moving right but i'm gonna shoot you straight my my dad was a, a man of the hills you know i i come from men of the hills and i remember my dad delivering milk at seven in the morning four in the morning sometime in the morning and you know barely being able to make the mortgage payment i remember that you know i come from so you know i'm not like i'm one of you i mean you you know I, i'm just a regular guy so i'm not gonna lie to you but the men of the coast let me tell you they you know how they they've only recently got power because they got money they every time in the assembly that i stand up and try to get power for you guys try to get you a say in what's going on in the laws guess who votes against that men of the coast exactly he's like that's where we ought to focus our you know anger men of the coast because those are the guys you know how it is you, you you get a little power and then you're like nobody else could get power right they're the ones blocking it i'm there in the assembly every day standing up and saying look we cannot continue oppressing these people they deserve a say in the laws that they live under and it is wrong that they have been disenfranchised that they have been voiceless, that they have been unrepresented for this long. I get up there and I say that, and guess what you always hear? Up comes some man of the coast saying, well, I think you should only be able to vote if you own property. It doesn't affect them the way it affects us, the laws. So you see what they do? They block you from getting any power. And they say it's because you don't have any property, but guess who's keeping you from owning property? The same people. So the men of the hills are like, yeah, oh, let's get those men of the coast. And then Pisistratus goes to the men of the coast. He's like, look, between me and you, uh, the thing we have to worry about, the men of the hills, they are crazy. They're talking about armed violence. They're talking about attacking Athens, right? they're talking about coming down here and rioting down here where y'all live down here in town i mean they i'm serious they're a you got some of these guys amassing stockpiles of weapons and they are convinced for whatever bizarre reason because i you know you know how it is they're convinced that because you guys have worked hard and made yourself a little money that somehow you're the enemy, right? They've convinced themselves of this. And they're talking about, you know, really causing problems. And I, look, I know that I'm seen as someone who can talk to them. You know that I, I mean, they haven't, they haven't rioted yet. They haven't protested yet. They haven't marched down here in town yet. 
you know I can talk to him. So I'm if if you will grant me a little more authority to deal with it, I think I can prevent the violence. And the men of the plains are like, well, heck yeah, we can't make money if we're having things looted and right. Yes, yes, do what it takes, do whatever it takes, you know. So they give Pisistratus just a little more power to keep him safe. Then he goes to men of the hill. You know what they're saying? You know what the men of the coast are saying? That you not only should not have a say in the government, but that you shouldn't be allowed to even own weapons because you can't be trusted with them. That, that is what they're saying. I stood up and I'm like, it is the natural right of everyone to defend himself. I don't care how much property you own. And if you're living in a country and have to obey their laws, then you should have a say in making their laws. And these men of the coast are like, not only do, are they not going to have power, but we want to increase the size of government. We want to have laws in place that disarm those people because the violence, what violence? You'd be violent. I mean, this is Pisistratus. You'd be violent too, right? They'd be violent too if you treated them the way they treat you. But here they are asking for, you know, more weapons to take your, to put stricter laws on you, to tax. They're, they're saying we should tax the little bit of money you have to help pay for the infrastructure to help their businesses. Can you believe the audacity? And the men of the hills are like, yeah, forget this. No way. How are we? There's no, we have no way of getting any power in this place except from directly attacking the men of the coast. They are depriving us of what is by nature ours, the right to make our own law. And now they're wanting to take our weapons. They're wanting to increase our taxes. Why? Just so they can have more power. They have all the power as it is. We have none, and they're wanting to take the little bit of money that we're able to scrape by. They're living down here in several houses in town on the coast. We're living in a rented apartment that they own. And here they want to tax us more and raise our rent and take away our weapons. What? And Pisistra was like, I'm just the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. Well, Pisistratus and his boys, and I'm not going to tell the whole story. You got to look up and read. I, you, you understand? I'm only telling you like this much of the story. You go to the member the Constitution of Athens by Aristotle, Herodotus Histories, and Plutarch Life of Solon. You're, <clears throat> the story is even weirder than the one I'm telling you because I'm leaving out so much just so I can keep this to an hour. Pisistratus and his boys, they, well, basically it's like, make sure the men of the coast are so angry at the men of the hills, they want them punished, and the men of the hills are so angry at the men of the coast, they want them punished. But guess who is never in danger? Never. Guess whose name I haven't said since the beginning of this podcast? Men of the Plains. I mean, they're never in danger. They don't even, they're just, man, whatever, keep them arguing. Because <laughs> guess what this, if we can keep them fighting each other, guess who they never look at? And if we have to once in a while, you know, if they seem to be getting peaceful, rile them up a little bit. Put something in the news. Maybe write a check for a riot, but just mm, keep ourselves out of the news. Let's keep these two parties fighting, and we'll just stay back here. And You know, gosh, I can't believe the all the political intrigue and all oh, the political climate in this country is crazy. <laughs> Look what's happening in Maui. I'm not, I'm not going to get into it. But look what's happening in Maui. Has Jeff, no, has Jeff Bezos' mansion burned down? It's there. Has Oprah's mansion burned down? It's there too. Hmm. Did Jeff Bezos swim around in the ocean for a day so that he wouldn't get consumed by the fire? you know, the wildfire that they can't control. Things that make you go, 
Hmm. Anywho, what ends up happening? Well, I'm going to cut out Pisistratus. No, I'm not going to cut it out. Just tell it to Pisistratus gets some of his boys right out of town, out of Athens, right? Just out of town. And they take knives. Guys, if I'm lying, I'm dying. Read the stories. Pisistratus and some of his boys take knives and they cut themselves. They punch them. They punch each other. They cut themselves, cut their donkeys, their horses and stuff. And they come back into town. They ride into town. They're like, you'll never, hold on. Somebody give me a butterfly bandage because I'm bleeding like a stuck pig over here. And they're like, what? You know, men of the coast are, what happened? What happened? We were out of, we were just on the edge of town, up there by the hills. You know what I'm talking about, the hills. Papa John's won't even deliver. You know what I'm saying? We were out there just minding our own, having a picnic with our donkeys and our sandwiches. And uh, remember how I was telling you about the men of the hills getting all worked up? They're so worked up, they attacked me. And yeah, my boy, Steve, Ray Ray, Timbo, they, they attacked all of us. They're so angry and so riled up that they even attacked us who I'd never seen them like this. And the men of the coast are like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? He's like, all I know is we were barely outside of town. We weren't even in the proper, we were barely in the hills. And this happened. I'm telling you, they're coming to Athens. And he's like, uh, the only way I know to keep y'all safe is to get rid of all the weapons in town because let me tell you something. Y'all aren't going to kill each other. But you have this many weapons. Do you not see the anchor? Look at this. Look what happened to me. If it happens to me, imagine what's going to happen to you, your store, your house, your wife, your children. The only way now, at, as far as it's gone now, the only way to keep Athens and the streets of Athens safe is to confiscate all weapons. Because... At this point, you don't know if one of your neighbors, a man of the coast himself, is selling weapons to the men of the hills because he's making a deal with them not to be attacked when they ride. You don't even know that. You don't know that he's not doing it just for money. We cannot be safe with weapons in town. Now, I realize that's the thing. I'm not going to destroy them. I'm going to store them so that if they're ever needed, we'll have them but what I'm telling you is the things have gotten so bad that disarmament is the only way to be safe. I mean, that's, that's all. There. Matter of fact, now that I think about it, he says, I think we should have like, I, look at what happened to me. I'm the guy that you know, has been able to keep the peace. I don't even know if I can do that now. I, as you know, I would ask somehow that even I have a, a permanent little police force to, to keep me safe. I, I don't know, maybe, maybe we like to call it a secret service. I don't know. It's just off the top of my head. I'm just spitballing here, but maybe we have a, a little, I have my own private guard, you know, some guys that are armed. I'm yeah. Well, they're going to need weapons because they're protecting me and I'm protecting you. So, yeah, we're not going to disarm everybody because they will need weapons to protect me. And I'm all that's standing between you and the men of the hills coming down here and flattening, just ruining your world and constant violence in the streets. So, yeah, my private guard will be armed. They won't be disarmed like the rest of you, but that's because they need it to protect me and I protect you. And they're like, yeah. And he's like, you know, it'd be even better if we had like a, a permanent, like, police force. Like, people that would, you know, patrol the streets of Athens and the outside. And, yeah, they would be armed too, duh, because they're protecting all of us. So they'll keep their weapons. But that's because they're going to be our little army protecting us. They're our police force. They're protecting us. You guys, I'm telling you, you can't protect yourselves from each other anymore. 
because you can't try you don't know your neighbor you can't all the new people you don't know you don't know what man of the hills is fronting down here like he's a man of the coast or you don't even know what man of the coast is decide he's gonna betray his own people and sell weapons to them so we're gonna have to disarm but i'm gonna keep them safe for you okay and they did all of that. They gave him his little, I don't know what we call it, secret, let's just call it secret service. They gave him his little protectors and they rem- They had their weapons. They established a police force for Athens and they kept their weapons. But the citizens of Athens, the men of the coast, because men of the plains, not included in the disarmament law, they had their weapons seized. After a little while, people are like, why, why did we give him our weapons again? What was it? I, what, how did that happen? How did we, how, what? I can't own a, a semi-automatic spear. I can only have 12 arrow quiver because Pisistratus said it was to keep us safe. I, I don't, I'm not feeling safer. What, 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 how did we fall for that? Say the men of the coast. And they go, guess where they go? They go to, so I need a beverage, hold on. Brought to you today by the letter W and the number, number nine, number nine, number nine. Conspiracy theorist Paul died a long time ago. Anywho. Men of the coast now realizing I'm not any safer, even though Pisistratus has his own little secret protection force and we have a heavily armed police force and I have no weapons. I don't feel safer. They go to Solon. Oi! Solon! Solon's in his 90s. So it takes him a minute. He got to put his teeth in. He got to get dressed because you know what I'm saying. It's like 95 degrees in his house. Old's in their temperature, am I right? He puts his teeth in, you know, gets, puts his, you know, whatever, his row, I don't know what he puts on, puts his clothes on, comes out to the porch. What's up, coasties? And they're like, hey, remember Pisistratus that you warned us about? Oh, no. What do you do now? Yeah, um, took away all our weapons, took them, like went door to door, seizing your weapons. Um, I mean, not exactly. Well, what happened? So what happened was he told us that there was a lot of violence, and there was, and that the only way we could reduce the violence was to, um turn in our weapons and allow him to pass laws about what what weapons and to disarm us and he would he would be armed and his guard and the police people but we would not be armed because that's the only way to keep us safe oh so you went and then you gave him your weapon i mean he came door to door though right with like his little secret service or the police came door to door seizing your weapons Um, you know, not exactly. So you just gave them to him. I mean, it was the law. Well, first of all, Coasties, me and you, different definition of the law, but that that ship has sailed. Um, yeah, I don't know what I can do for you. I'm in my 90s. Maybe, I mean, these ain't even real. All right, these ain't even real. So I don't know what I can do for you. I'm sorry. And then he, they're like, Solon, please help us. You're our only hope. Or was that Obi-Wan Kenobi? Was Solon Obi-Wan Kenobi? (sighs) Solon turns around and says one of the most profound things. Now, Solon was famous, honestly, look it up, for rhyming things. Like he would say things in rhyming form, in poetical form. I'm not kidding. Like he would do it on purpose so that, because in his mind, if I could make it rhyme, they will remember it better. And I mean, I think he's right, right? 
So he turns around and he tells the men of the coast, now that they've been disarmed by the tyrant for their own safety, he says, and this is a quote from him, and you can find this in the uh, Plutarch biography of Solon, the life of Solon. If you now suffer, do not blame the gods, for they, is, they are good, and all the fault is yours. All your weapons and your power you put into his hands, and now as his slaves you must do as he commands. And with that, Solon threw a cane and a spear down on the ground and walked back into his house. If you now suffer, do not blame the gods, for they are good. All the fault is yours. All your weapons and power you put into his hands. And now as his slaves... You must do as he commands. And at the end of it all, and I'm skipping a lot of the story, Pisistratus is able to hold on to power. But I'm telling you, go read the story, those three sources, please, guys. You will, you will be like, Joey, why'd you leave out the part about the fake Athena? Man, he didn't tell us about the cursed woman that, that Pisistratus... Oh my goodness, he didn't even mention Megacles in this story. Guys, I can't tell the whole story. The freaking podcast would be five hours long. It's a crazy story, though. And I already just, look, I already gave some spoilers. Fake Athena, Megacles', Megacles daughter, Megacles' wife being like, you better do something about Pisistratus. Oh my goodness. The, the, oh, mm -mm. Just go read it. There, Aristotle... Constitution of Athens, sometimes called the Athenian Constitution, but come on. Plutarch's Life of Solon, S-O-L-O-N, and Herodotus' Histories. I'm telling you, the story is weird. What about the play that Solon just... Mm, go read it. Trust me, I'm just cutting down. So, Pisistratus, despite all of this, is somehow able to hold on to power. And guess who's never affected by the riots, by the violence, never subjected to the disarmament, just kind of sitting there, staying super rich, and somehow never suffering destruction of their property, don't see their house burned down. Mm-mm. Don't see the men of the hills attacking them. Uh, men of the coast and men of the hills fighting constantly. Men of the plains? I, you know, I don't know. It's terrible the way y'all keep being attacked by the men of the hills. How much for that? What? You want a couple of buses to take you down there? Here you go. You didn't get it from me. Man, it is terrible the way they oppress you. I mean, it's been so... They just find ways... Am I right? To oppress you, keep you out of power, tax you, keep you poor. They're finding ways to do that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I, I don't know what is going on. Hey, you guys need me to put a law against them because they're crazy violent. Do you guys need a law? You want a law? Okay. Men of the Plains, just somehow in the middle, just, mm, I sure wish we weren't so politically divided Pisistratus and them in there <sighs> which one should we do riot or disarmament what are we looking at today what are we looking at today fellas <sighs> that's me with my how should I smoke my cigar <sighs> what do we do today guys Who we? which side we want to support some laws some taxes some riots some weapons what do we want to do <sighs> what just Spin, just spin, spin the wheel. Spin the wheel of corruption. Brrr. So, Pisistratus, amazingly, as a man of the plains, pretending to be friend of the men, men of the hills, and disarmer of the men of the plains, actually holds on to power, and he enacts several reforms 
to make things more equal. Want to hear him? Want to hear what he did? Want to hear his reforms, boys and girls? Would you like to hear him? All right. Now see if they sound familiar, boys and girls. Because won't you be my neighbor? All right, here we go. These are the Pisistratus reforms to make Athens, no, I don't know, what would I say, to build back better, make Athens great again. I don't know. Hey, that's even MAGA. That's crazy. But anyway, you get the point. Here's his reforms, political reforms. Number one, reduce taxes on the poor. Number two, increase taxes on small landowners. Number three, consolidate all political power in Athens. Number four, allow non-citizens to vote. Number five, establish a minimum wage. Number six, tax landowners to fund welfare programs for the poor. Number seven, change the number of judges. Number eight, introduce farm subsidies. Just parenthetically, do you think those subsidies ended up going to the small little men of the hills with their little plots? Do you think they're the ones that got the subsidies? Or maybe like Monsanto and Archer Daniel Midland? No, I'm sure it was the very small family farm. I'm sure they're the ones that got the subsidies. It was not the big agra corporations. There's no way that happened in Athens. Use money collected from men of the coast to actually buy property for men of the hills. Because I'm sure that happened. Hey, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to increase taxes. We're going to put a new tax on the men of the coast. We're going we're gonna to call it, I don't know, what do we call it? Social Security tax. Let's call it that. Just spitballing again. I don't know. I've never heard of Social Security, but let's call it that because we're social and this is going to make you more secure. Let's call it Social Security. I'm going to make the men of the coast pay into that. And, and well, y'all will pay into it too. I mean, don't, don't get twisted. We want to be equal. Am I right? So, but they'll pay more and they'll never get it. <clears throat> but I'm going to take part of this and guess what we're going to do? I'm going to buy y'all some property. Yeah, all you got to do, just apply. Just come down to the office because, you know, it's all federal. I mean, it's all a thin, you know, Athens. We, we're all the stuff's in that. I know you used to be able to do it in your little town. No, it's so much corruption. We brought, you know, you can't trust those little, you know what, the corruption in small towns. Are you kidding me? You got to come to your federal aid office and you fill out some forms. Oh, yeah, you can do it online. Sure, of course. No, the Internet hasn't been invented and won't be for like another, I don't know, 2,400, 500, 600 years, about, you know, just under 3,000 years. But when it is, you can, it'll take about that long for us to process it anyway. So yeah, go ahead and do it online. And if you fill out the forms, you'll be able to use that to buy some property. Well, no, it won't be enough. What we'll do, I think what we'll end up doing, I mean, if we're just being honest, we'll just subsidize how much interest the men some other people charge you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll just like, if you owe, you know, if they're charging you 10%, we'll make it 6%. That's what, but we'll use this money from Men of the Coast to help you guys out. You're, I need you to thank me. I mean, vote for me if you want to. I mean, you know, if you want to do that, maybe. I, oh, no, didn't you hear my reform? You're allowed, you're not a citizen. You're still allowed to vote. Vote twice. Come on, who's counting? Am I right? I am. <laughs> I'm counting the votes. So vote, vote twice. Yes, of course. Yes, your grandma's from Sparta. Yeah, who cares? Take her a ballot. You know what I'm saying? Take her a ballot and scan it. I mean, you know, it's not about who votes. It's about who counts the votes. <laughs> Anywho. Use money out of the treasury to bribe other governments into making secret deals with the government of Athens. What? Forced. Now listen to this. This is his last reform that I'll tell you about. He forced families to send their schools to schools he funded and managed. P 
Pisistratus said, we need the way to stop this decline and this, this cycle of violence and this une inequality is to have an educated generation. We need to have these kids. We need to start them sooner. We need to establish a curriculum, and we need to send them outside the home for school. Because in, let's face it, there are some of these people in town, and I just don't think they're qualified to teach their children. I'm going to be honest with you. They're, you know what I'm saying? They're not qualified. So we'll have, I have qualified. Oh, yeah, they'll have a card, fingerprint card. They'll have a piece of paper. I don't know what we'll call it, a license. Does that sound right? I don't know. We'll call it, a, call it a certificate, license. I don't know. We'll think of some name. And they'll have one of these from me because obviously I will. I'm educated, right? I mean, my dad was one of you guys. He delivered milk at like 3, 30, 4, I don't know, 7. I don't know. He delivered milk when I was little, barely pay the mortgage. But anywho, that's neither here nor there. He, uh, yep, I... I know what it's like. So, but I, I educate. I pulled myself up. I educated myself, and I know how important education is. And I can tell you for a fact, some of these parents aren't qualified to teach their kids. So, what I'm doing, and re, I mean, you you know for yourselves, the more education you have, the you know, the freer you are. So, what I'm going to do is. I'm going to establish some schools. I'm going to qualify the teachers. I'm going to fund it. I, well, I'm going to use some of your money to fund because it's for the it's for the greater good. It's for the public good. You know, these will be schools for the public. And I will, of course, you guys will contribute. But think about it. You're, it's actually an investment in your future because the more we can spend on schools and teachers and me the more we can do that the more educated the next generation will be and that's just you investing in your future in these schools for the public would you public school that's a cool name i mean uh, let's go with it public school you know i i like it it's it has, it's got sort of a, a twang to it like public schools people be like yeah they're for the public yeah and the public funds them government but I mean, really, they're going to be government funded, not where. Well, I mean, OK, yes, government. OK, you guys will fund it, but I am the one who taking care of you. Right. I You elected me to take care of you to run the show. I, I mean, I'm capital T, the tyrant, you know, capital P, Pisistratus. I don't know. I don't know what that had to do with it, anything. But. Um, you know, you trust me to take care of you, and you're just making an investment in your future. Yeah, it'll look. You know, you don't. You know, um, no such thing as a free lunch, guys. I mean, if you want something, you got to pay for it. So, yeah, are you gonna have to pay a little bit more taxes? Yes, but I'm gonna tax the men of the hills because we're gonna let their kids go to school, too. I'm going to tax hills and coast, um, you know, I'm going to tax all of it. And because it, it's going to be for the pu remember public school, it's going to be for all y'all. Yes, you'll pay more in taxes, but guess what? You you buy stocks. Why? You you end up with less money because you buy stocks. Why? Because it's an investment. Well, that's what these schools are going to be. An investment in the next generation. We won't have to put up with all this violence, with all this political corruption, because they will have been taught by you know qualified teachers that'd be the you know that's a big deal okay cool yeah uh, don't don't forget to vote for me yeah those are the 11 reforms that you can read about reduce taxes on the poor increase taxes on small landowners consolidate all power in athens allow non-citizens to vote establish a minimum wage tax landowners to fund welfare for the poor, change the number of judges, introduce farm subsidies, use money collected from men of the coast to buy property for men of the hills, wink, use money out of the treasury to bribe other governments in making secret deals with Athens, force families to send their sons to school funded and managed by Pisistratus and his pals. 
2,600 years and nothing has changed, y'all. And this isn't Joey making up stories. Do you understand? This is the scary part. This is me just reading history. And, well, history repeats itself. No, it doesn't. It doesn't repeat itself. It's simply the sad record of how we don't seem to be able to recognize when we're being tricked. We fall for the same I'm men of the coast, so that means it's the men of the hills. I'm man of the hills, it means the men of the coast. While the men of the plains just sit there. What is it today, fellas? Which side do we need to rile up today, guys? 2,600 years, y'all. Pathetic. But we can do something about it, you see. Now, we can do something about it. But why has it not changed? Because we never, we don't learn these stories anymore. Our founding fathers knew Pisistratus. Google it. They quote that dude. They not quote him. They talk about him all the time. Our founding fathers knew the life of Solon. They knew the Athenian constitution. They knew Herodotus. Had you heard of the men of the hills, men of the coast, men of the plains before today? Had you heard of Pisistratus before today? Had you even heard of Herodotus, Solon? Why? Have you read Plutarch's lives? No. Have you read Aristotle's Constitution? No, why? Because it's been secreted? And no, it's no secret. It's here for everybody. It's only a secret. It's just not taught anymore. And why? There's a very good reason. Because we've been sending our children to Pisistratus' schools in America for about a hundred years now. And if you think Pisistratus is going to teach kids about Pisistratus and about the tactics that he uses to take their liberty and property, you're crazy. But for about a hundred years, we've been saying, yeah, we need to invest in these, what did they call it, public schools? Pisistratus is not going to teach anybody how to recognize and get rid of a tyrant. Pisistratus is still managing and funding the schools. And when I say he's funding them, you are. But again, dis, just like the disarmament, you didn't pay any taxes. Taxes were taken from you. you no, you don't pay them. They're taken from you. Disarmament, they're not coming door to door yet. Uh-uh. We're just obeying. Well, Pisistratus said I could only have six arrow quiver, so he said my, my spear could only be two feet long, so... We don't want to come in door to door taking your stuff. We're just obeying the tyrant. If we suffer, do not blame the gods, for they are good. Our weapons and our power we put into his hands and now as his slaves. First thing to do, we need to realize we've been played by the same people. Men of the coast, men of the hills, we're all being played by the men of the plains. Second, we need to realize that disarmament under any excuse whatsoever is a threat to freedom and has always been the tactic of tyrants. We got to take our kids out of the Pisistratus schools. No matter how much it costs, no matter the sacrifice, we cannot be ignorant and free. But we keep sending our kids to the same schools hoping for a different outcome because we've paid more and we've spoken out at a school board meeting. That's the definition of insanity, repeating the same behavior, hoping for a different outcome. We got to stop that. We got to stop it. We need to stop being seduced into thinking that this party or that party is to blame. They're not. Those parties, both of them, are under the control of the men of the plains, always have been, always laugh at it. They always are sitting there laughing at us, getting angry at them because they're not us. While the men of the plains sit there think, laughing at us for not knowing who the real us and them is. Another man you've heard about. No, you've never heard about him. But he's one of the top ten men most often quoted by the founding generation. Samuel Pufendorf. This is what he said about when political parties uh, gain power in a country. Being divided into factions, parties, they are more concerned then to ruin their rivals than to follow the dictates of reason. I don't care about doing what's right. I want to punish my political rival. Sound familiar? 
Finally, I'm going to give you a little something from our friends, John Trenchard and Thomas Gordon. Cato's letter, number 17. Quote, talking about the men of the plains, y'all. They will create parties in the republic or keep them going where they've already been established. And by playing them by turns, each upon the other, will rule over both. Now, I'm going to switch out the words of the two parties he used because we don't have those parties, but this is a direct quote from them, from Cato number 17. I'm just changing the name of the parties. So I'll start again. And remember, I'm changing the name of the parties to Republican and Democrat so that it makes sense. I'll start over. They will create parties in the republic or keep them going where they've already existed. And by playing them by turns upon each other, will rule over both. By making the Republicans angry at the Democrats, making the Democrats angry at the Republicans, they will make themselves seem like the medium and balance between the two parties. But in reality, they will use both of these parties in their turn as the props of their authority and the instruments of their plans. Friends, it's been 2,600 years. Can we please stop being duped by the Pisistratuses? Can we please stop looking at the men of the coast or the men of the hills as our enemies and start recognizing who are the true enemies of liberty? And may we unite together against them so that we can restore our liberty before we end up crying to Solon and begging him to help us. But it's just too late. Liberty, once lost, is lost forever. We can do this, guys. We can do this. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs>